Welcome to Cage Minds. I'm Micah Frankel, normally talking to fighters. We're going to talk a lot about fighters today, and in a different, what I feel is going to be very interesting way. Joining me today is award-winning filmmaker, Landon Dykstrahouse. Sir, thank you for the time today. How are you doing? Doing good. Thank you for having us on today to talk about our upcoming documentary, Warrior Spirit, about Nico Montano and all the exciting things that go on around extreme weight cutting in the UFC and beyond. Gotta ask, when we go back to the beginning, how did you in your process set on doing a film, doing a documentary around Nico? What was that process like, first of all? Yeah, um, well, we, we are actually came from Albuquerque and our first documentary was with, I don't know if you can see it, the guys behind me there, Jackson to Jim. So, that, that was our very first project in MMA, and that's kind of how we got involved in the industry. And um, with Nico, we, we had done uh, three other projects before we had gotten into contact with Nico. Uh, obviously, she was coming off the Ultimate Fighter uh, win and championship, and she was getting ready to defend against Valentina. So the timing was right, and uh, we had reached out to her about documenting her journey you know, coming from Luka Chukai Reservation is a big deal to become a UFC champion. You don't hear that story much. And, uh, you know, she defied all the odds to become a champion in the UFC. And so we had reached out to her and there was an Albuquerque connection because she trained at Fit NHB during the time of this filming. Um, so that that's what brought it all together. And how long into the process of filming did it take a turn that the direction of the film kind of changed from exactly what you thought it was going to be to taking on the life that it now has? Yeah, a lot of people are, you know, the teaser clip came out for Warrior Spirit, and a lot of people are saying, oh, my gosh, the timing of this. She she just missed weight this weekend, and now you release the clip. Well, here's the, here's the reality of that. First of all, we are premiering the film Friday in Las Vegas. So regardless if she fought, if she made weight or didn't make weight, that clip and the promotion for the documentary was going to happen. So just to clear the record on that. And then regarding um, when, the, when the story took a turn during production is when, when you set out to do a documentary, the idea of the project is to follow a story you have in mind, and then also be aware of the twists and turns it could possibly take and be able to build off of that. A documentary, like I told you before we got on uh, recording here, is that this is not scripted. We don't have a say in what happens in front of the camera, okay? And so what unfolds is what unfolded in real time in reality. And the way we shoot documentaries um, is, is a certain style called uh, Doc Verte, which is basically as it happens is what you see. It's like a fly on the wall observational type of documentary approach, right? We're not doing big productions, not big uh, sit down interviews with lighting and all these things. It's run and gun. So we're following the fighter around, in this case, Nico Montano, documenting her journey and what's happening. And as that come, unfolds, then a story starts to present itself. Now, the original idea for the film was to document the story of an underdog fighter who defied the odds, Nico Montano coming from the Luka Chukai reservation and going against the supreme Russian talent in the women's division, Valentina. Very much uh, similar to the Rocky story, right? Where Sylvester Stallone's going up against Dolph Lundgren, <laughs> who he, no one thinks they can defeat him. That was the original idea for the story. That's what we set out to document. When did the film take a turn? Well, the first inkling we really got was when uh, we had we were filmed with Nico on the Lukachukai reservation when she came back for graduation weekend at Chinle High School. She did a, a keynote speech. And one of the things she mentioned during that time is that because on the reservation, they still have to do a lot of things like bring their own food, for example, or, you know, take care of themselves because they don't have all the normal commodities you do in a regular city. So that was the first thing that 
tells you, oh, diet may or may not be an issue in this story. So, you know, weight cutting is always an issue in every fighter's story. So you, you track it as part of the story. How much different was this process than the previous MMA documentaries that you've been a part of the posters we can see behind you? Sure. Um, well, they're, they're all different. And whatever you set out to do, it, it's, it's never what they become. They always take on a life of their own. And then how was it different from the previous couple MMA documentaries we did? Well, with Greg, Greg Jackson's gym, The Proving Grounds, that documentary was based around uh, telling a, a true Albuquerque story about how Greg and Coach Winklejohn created what was arguably the greatest mixed martial arts training facility in the world. You know, people were coming from everywhere, still, you know, claim uh, the pound for pound number one fighter in the world, John Jones, who's in the film. He was very young at that time. And uh, other fighters like GSP and, and, and flagship fighters of, of the gym, like Cerrone, Garcia, Julie Kedzie, Diego Sanchez, the list goes on. That film was about that gym. We, we covered the different parts of that gym, how Greg started and how the fighters started coming there, the small conflicts that arose with that gym, Diego leaving, coming back. These weren't maybe monumental to some people, but a lot of people liked it. Uh, with Yair's story, it was more about his struggle um, as, as a fighter coming here to America during a, uh, I think, Trump, Trump had just taken office as this film was coming out. So it took on kind of a life of, you know, an immigrant doing what he needed to do to have a better life for his family. And that's why he fights. Coming from Chihuahua, Mexico, and facing the issues that a lot of immigrants face when trying to find a better life and why they do what they do. And that was his story, El Pantera which that film's on Hulu, if anybody wants to go watch it. So that's the difference between the documentaries. Look at Nico's, were you surprised? Because we've both been around this industry for quite a while. And, <clears throat> and a lot of the things that come up, the weight cutting, and I know there's several other things, uh, including fair wages that are mentioned in the press release. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of aspects that I feel that are very important in the MMA industry. There's what they're not really covered. Were you surprised that they all kind of took light in front of you at one time? Uh, yeah, it's kind of like I, I referred to earlier. It's like, once you open Pandora's box, you, you can't, you know, you try to shut the lid, but you can't. It's just, it all starts coming out. And with what happened to Nico, missing the weight cut for UFC 20, 228, uh, the fight with Valentina where she was supposed to defend. There were so many factors that played into her story that uh, relate to the health and safety protocols of these fighters and, and how things could be better. I mean, this is really a story about, you know, how, how can things be better? It's like many Americans face in the workforce, like why are they not getting certain things like health insurance, especially in a sport like MMA where they're bashing each other's face in? You would think there's some type of regulation on what kind of health insurance they get. For example, when that film was nearing its conclusion uh, filming after she didn't make weight, she came home to Albuquerque. UFC sent her a uh, copay for 1500 bucks because she didn't make the fight. I mean, this are, it's in the documentary. So this stuff like this, how does that happen, right? Obviously she's cutting weight to make the fight. It is a requirement. That's an issue, right? That, that's a major issue. She, you know, there's so many other things the film talks about, but you know, for example, you do media week, right? They get a certain amount per media week. They have to go to media week. Um, if they don't make one event out of the, say, for a champion like Nico, she had to do maybe like 20, 30 interviews leading the two weeks into fights, right? All, all kinds of media outlets. If you don't make those or you don't make the scale, guess what? You don't get your sponsorship money. And then on top of that, you don't get paid if you make it to the fight. And the issue of an independent contractor versus an employee, right? Even if they were 
considered an employee, like a lot of the people who work for the UFC, for example, they would get health benefits. But because they're an independent contractor, they don't get a lot of those health benefits. Now, I'm not saying the UFC doesn't take care of their fighters with injuries and things of that nature, okay? Because right. it just depends what they need from the fighter. That's, a, that's an important point. For example, in Nico's story, she, ha- she keeps getting sick after the ultimate fighter. They want her to quickly come back and defend against Valentina, right? They, they took care of her by getting her tonsils removed. Uh, it was publicized, her dispute with Ariel Hawani. Why can't she get to the fight sooner? What's going on? She's ducking the match, et cetera, et cetera. Well, guess what? They flew her out to get her tonsils removed so she could heal up and stop getting sick to make the fight. Now, in that instance, they took care of it. You know what I mean? But, of course, it was to help the bottom line, ultimately. And, again, she was forced in earlier than she wanted to to take that fight and, of course, make the weight coming off the injury or a foot injury, coming off tonsil, uh, removing her tonsils. I mean... There's so much to the story that when people watch, instead of hurling insults at Nico and, you know, what, you know, she can't make it, she's not a legit champ, blah, blah, blah. Watch the film and, and, and consider the other factors in her story and in many other fighters before think- you, you know, before you judge. What is it like pouring over that many hours of footage? Well, that, that's exactly... So I alluded to earlier how you follow the different storylines that that could potentially blossom as you go through the journey. And and then when you come back to the edit room after filming all this, you say, oh, did did I get that back then early when she was talking about how, you know, making, uh, you know, this meal at this time is is is, you know, it's hard to find the right things to eat. Right. To start descending into the proper weight class she needs to make it onto the scale of fight week. That's where that comes into play, where you go back and look at all the stuff you filmed. Oh, I do have that. So that's a part of the story. And then it makes it into the cut of the film. And then maybe something like the 20th training you filmed at the gym, you know, where they're sparring doesn't make the cut because there's a certain importance that it plays to the narrative. And, and that's why, you know, not only did it take a little bit of time for the film to finally make its way to the public, but also, you know, COVID, like everything else, shut down lots of film festivals and, and rolling this out earlier, like we would have expected, because, you know, a lot of this was shot back when uh, she was going to defend against Valentina uh, at 2.28. So. Now, as we move forward this week and the film will finally be seeing the light of day, people are going to be able to watch it. Uh, as the filmmaker, what are those nerves and excitement and anticipation like? Uh, it's very exciting. You know, when you work on something for two years, like like anything, it's a big deal. You know what I mean? We put a lot into it. Our, you know, the, the, presenting, the presenters of this project, Warrior CVD, is an Albuquerque company. Uh, our executive producers, Jason and Nancy Bowles. Um, all three of us ha- are, are the main filmmakers and producers behind this project. And for us to be able to debut in Las Vegas, uh, the arguably the fight capital, I get, most people would say Albuquerque yeah. is the fight capital. So <laughs> they could go back and forth on that. It, it's a big deal for us. And we'll also be rolling out at, at a lot of other festivals too here towards the end of the summer and the fall we'll be announcing dates and screenings and all that but it's it's a big deal to put out the teaser which just came out last week and and then have people see the film for themselves so they can judge about what the if these are real issues or not but i guarantee you all the conversations happening online on twitter the comments section in the teaser i guarantee you this film is going to be a game changer this is the documentary the UFC does not want you to see. It's so powerful for me because I know him even when you're ending that teaser and it's Tom Vaughn and it's, they have insurance. Well, don't they? I, I mean, I know, and I know him, a guy that's been around this industry 
basically since it's began and he's done everything from fight to promote to manage to put events together he has been there and done that i i found that to be such a, a powerful remark yeah i mean tom and arlene uh they were nico's trainers and managers at the time of filming this project um obviously they are well known for fit nhb uh there tim means another product of fit and Tom even says in the film, in the, I think it was the 20th year anniversary for FIT. And at the end of all this, he said, I, you know, one of the questions we posed to him was, have you ever seen anything like this happen in all your time in MMA and dealing with the UFC and all that? He said, never, nothing like this. This is, I mean, we, we've seen the weight, hard weight cuts, we've seen all that, but for all the stuff to happen, like it did to Nico, Jay had never seen something like this. And, you know, there, there's a real, there's a real story arc in the film. If you watch closely about, you know, being at the top of the mountain and then, you know, coming down to the valley because, you know, the, the way she was treated and, and the way things played out were, you know, it, it's, this is why we believe this could be a game changing film to help, fighter safety, health and regulation, uh, sanctioning around weight cutting, uh, fighter pay, health benefits. Uh, you know, it's like Leslie Smith said a long time ago, we need to unionize and we can make a change. You wonder why the UFC fighters only get 12 to 14% of revenue share? And the NBA, the NFL, the NHL are paying their athletes up to 50% of the revenue share. I mean, these are issues to look at. I'm, because I, I'm an independent filmmaker and I'm not a fighter and I'm not under the guise of the UFC, we can talk about these things. And, and we, if, if we have to be the scapegoat for the issues at the moment, so be it. Many other fighters have gone through the same thing. Look at what Diego Sanchez was talking about a couple a month or two back. Yes, his story was crazy with, you know, the trainer, uh, Joshua Fabia and all that. But the issues they were bringing up were legit. Why can't I see my health records? I would like to know what might happen to my body and my brain in the next 20 years of my life. And having some documentation of that would be great. Things like this. There's there's so many more, you know. The guy in the background, the superstar, John Jones, pound for pound, can't even get the fight he wants. The guy hasn't lost. The guy is the number one, he's the Michael Jordan of MMA. Why can't he get a fight? There's a lot of issues to look at for sure. And it's not just weight cutting. Um, but weight cutting what is the vehicle in this film, and it it will, like I said it will open Pandora's box and, and get people talking. And that's the whole idea. <clears throat> as you're filming, as you're in some of these meetings, whether it be at the PI with Dana White there, just a lot of these meetings that you're sitting in filming, you're looking back at this footage, are, are you surprised at the nature of some of the things that played out in front of you, thinking they realized they had a camera and they said it was okay, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and that's that's what's, awkward about the situation it's like if, if you saw our piece on hbo real sports with brian gumbel at, at the end uh brian gumbel remarks you know the the ufc pi failed that woman talking about nico and then the host of that segment david scott goes on to say well it's actually biologically impossible to do some of the things they're trying to get fighters to do in regards to cutting that much weight in that short of time um and and if you want to take it a step further, think about women in general. Their bodies are made to hold on to nutrients, to give life, to birth babies. And they are doing like Nico on fight week was 143, 141. I mean, she had to lose like on the water cut. And she had 24 hours to lose like 20 pounds. It's in 15, 20 pounds. It's insane. And, but they're telling her seven weeks earlier, you have the body fat to make 125. We've seen it before. We'll be good to go. But there's <laughs> other issues. You know what I mean? Like, what about her metabolic health 
uh, coming off the Ultimate Fighter show where she fought four or five fights in the you know short span of several months. You know what that does to your metabolic system? It ruins it. You, they, it's it's part of the science at the UFC PI is tracking that and to supposedly make the weight cutting safer. So if you're not going to follow the science you're putting out uh, of what makes your place great, then then what's the point of it? That's a red flag. It's it's incredible. So we've talked about there's issues with contracts. We've understood that. We've also, I'm guessing we're going to understand a little bit more into the negotiation tactics. And like any guy who, who does what he did with the UFC, take it from, you know, this tiny little MMA promotion to arguably one of the most famous and well-regarded uh, sports franchises in the world. That, I mean, that's kudos to him. He, him and his team, you know, they're, this is not what this is about. Like, and, and there's a way to do things, but when, when you come over a certain hump and, you know, just, you know, a thing like taking the sponsorships away from the fighters, right? Like you get a sponsorship deal and the fighters get a measly, whatever percentage it is, you know, 0.01% of the sponsorship money in their, in their kits and stuff like that. It's just like at a point, you know, there, there's, you know, there's a reason why there's rules, regulations, and, and why people bring things up, why people unionize, why people put out documentaries like Warrior Spirit. It's to influence and, and hopefully make positive change that not only helps fighters and fans enjoy the sport, but elevates the sport itself to a, a higher level. We're just days away, and the film will finally be seen. We are premiering at the Las Vegas Premier Film Festival this Friday, August 6th. Uh, it will be take place at the Galaxy Theaters uh, at Boulevard Mall uh, here in Las Vegas. The showtime is 7.30 for the film, and there will be a red carpet at 6. Uh, it should be a lot of fun. We're told the UFC will be there. I have a buddy at the UFC says he'll be sending someone. We have the Vegas Sun coming out and lots of other media outlets it should be <laughs> when people see the film like i said let's 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 see what happens then it's like i said this is the documentary the ufc probably does not want you to see what well, was there ever a conversation with the ufc about the documentary yeah well for example when we got got done filming and the weight cut went south uh and I'm not talking about from this last weekend, I'm talking about from the fight with Valentina. They, they called me in and, and I sat down with Clint who managed uh, Nico's weight cut and sat down with the director of the PI, uh, James Kerbo. And they basically told me in a nutshell, you know, there's some sensitive stuff that you probably captured during the filming of this documentary. You know, we would love to be able to screen it. And I said, yes, you will be able to screen it along with, you know, everybody else at the, you know, when, when we're ready to present it. And like I said, this is not a crusade to take down the UFC. This, this is a chance and an opportunity to make things better. And, and that, that's what good documentaries do. Think of films like Blackfish, you know, about the sea world, what was going on there. And, and, Films like Icarus that, ex, you know, expose the doping be behind Olympic sports and all these things, they, they really just pull back the curtain and it's up to the public to decide what needs to happen. And um, hopefully the right influencers and people will be ready to step up and make positive change and actually talk about the film as well. You know, so many of the MMA media and people in general are, you know, you say something negative about the UFC or Dana White and they try to you know, they want it, their their way of spinning it is to crush you or to act like it's not relevant or who the fuck is that guy? That's and fine. I, think, but, <laughs> I mean, the truth is the truth. So it, it will be revealed. And a lot of the issues that are brought up, and I know it's a, it's a documentary with the UFC, obviously heavily involved at the PI, but a lot of these issues, it streams across the global world of MMA. Yes, for sure. And, and let's be clear, like guys like Clint Wattenberg, who who managed Nico's weight cut, he, he was trying to do the right things, you know, helping her and working on fight dates that are better for her. But again, 
it's even, it's above him. You know what I mean? It's when, no, you're taking this date now because this is the pay-per-view that works for us and this is what we're selling. And, you know, that that's, that's why it's just, that's why people have rules and regulations and safeguards against things. It, it's to make things better. It's, it's not to, you know, tear down the sport or tear down the UFC, for example, you know? Sounds like you just want to lead to a, to a conversation to push things forward. Yeah, I mean, I encourage everybody to just go watch the teaser clip, Warrior Spirit teaser clip. It's on YouTube. It's free to watch, obviously. Check it out. See if you if you know you you determine that, and then if you want to come watch the film here in Vegas or watch it, at, you know, when we premiere in another city, then then you know you can have an informed opinion about the realities because it's not just Nico. So mil, there's tons of people we can point to that these things have happened to. And naming a few off the top of my head, people have missed, oh, she always misses weight. What about Max Holloway who missed weight and didn't have his belt taken when he missed weight? Why did Nico get stripped of her belt? It's her first weight cut missed. I mean, there, these, these are questions like that are, you know, it, of course, could the great Khabib has missed weight for fights. You know what I mean? And and the, literally the list goes on. Tim Means, Darren Till, you know, Uriah Hall, all these people, they, they, they wonder, you know, oh, Nico didn't come prepare, blah, blah, blah. Dude, watch the film. Watch how hard she worked. Three days, busting her ass, doing everything they said to do. You know, there's bigger issues at play. Um, and hopefully that's what the film will address and kind of open people's eyes a little bit. And, uh, you know, hopefully things will get better moving forward. The plan for the film is film festivals. Is there any other kind of distribution in the future that you can let us know about? Yes, we have lots of surprises coming up. Can't give them all away yet, but we have notable film festivals and rollouts coming through the rest of the summer and into the fall. And we'll let people know at, at, as it's time, one thing at a time, world premiere of Warrior Spirit is this Friday in Las Vegas at the Las Vegas Premier Film Festival. Thank you to Walt, the director of the film festival for recognizing what kind of film this is gonna be and putting us at a marquee showtime on Friday night, you know, at 7.30, it's gonna be a lot of fun. And I will put the link for the trailer, for both trailers in the description on YouTube. And then if you're watching this on the website, just scroll down. Most likely I'm gonna have both links right here on the website so you can watch them right here from their YouTube. Uh, anywhere and, and, else and people should go. Let's just say one more thing. What's it gonna take for protocol to really change? Do people have to die at a live stream of the weigh-ins or, or right after that for it to happen? Is that what we need to happen to get to the point of change? I mean, because people have died weight cutting before. I mean, it, it's just, what does it take? You know what I mean? Like, come on, everybody talks about it. It's now documented. It's, it's an issue. Why, it's such an archaic pra practice, right? There, there are other ways to do things better. This is a story for everybody that goes out there and busts their ass at a nine to five and doesn't get treated properly, doesn't have health benefits, doesn't make the right paycheck, doesn't get taken care of when they need to. This is, this is a microcosm for a bigger thing. And th there's a bigger issue, bigger theme to the film as well regarding you know the exploitation of Native Americans and, and things of that nature. So there's very similar parallel to how, uh, the UFC and other fight leagues exploit their fighters. So be ready for that. The, the bottom line is it's about the bottom line. And, uh, you know, we, this, this is a big topic in America, you know, capitalism and these things and how far are we going to go and destroy things? Look at the, you know, look at the climate of the earth. What are, you know, are our kids going to have a place to live or are going to have to, transport everybody to Mars. There's a point where, you know, things need to shift back the other way, you know, to, to, to help all of us. It's not to say that everything has to be perfect, but when the grumblings and the gripes and the criticisms are repeated and then they escalate and they get worse 
and you know look at some of the biggest stars in the sport like cyborg how unhappy she was with the ufc people like that who get john jones why can why can't we get John Jones a fight? <laughs> he said he's ready, you know, and then they try to spin it on him. I mean, Yair's another good one. For the amount of trauma these guys take to their body, they should be getting paid better. There's lower tier boxers on prelim cards that make better money than main card UFC fighters. But again, it's just like, you know, when are the issues going to be talked about and brought to light? Uh, I think starting Friday, we will help start the conversation for sure. I can't wait to hear that conversation as we proceed, Landon. Yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah. No, thank you for the time. And we appreciate you guys and, and the pillar you guys are in Albuquerque, uh, the fight publication. We love you guys. The premiere has happened. So what was Friday night like? Friday was great. We had a nice turnout at the um, the premiere at the Las Vegas uh, Premier Film Festival. Um, the film got a, a great reception as far as the content in it and people, I think the easiest way to put it is where people were shocked. Um, they were appalled. Um, people who weren't familiar with MMA or even more taken aback, I would say. Um, I think a lot of people who've been around MMA understand that a lot of these things come with being a fighter. And then others who have never seen it uh, or know anything about weight cutting, for example, they just, they said, how, how does this even go on in a sport like that? It, it's just like when we, when we looked at the contents of the film, we just couldn't believe what, what we had captured because it is, it is pretty mind blowing. <clears throat> the premiere had just happened. Have you had or received any reaction yet from inside the MMA industry? You know, comments and, you know, direct messaging. Oh, yeah. It's just, I mean, go look at the teaser video on YouTube. <laughs> it's, it's got 433 comments in a week. That's organic. That's not, you know, robot or paid promotion or anything like that. So people are going crazy. There's, for example, there's fighters who comment and say, weight cutting is a part of the game. How could she not make it? This never happens. Well, if it never happens, let's take an Albuquerque example, Ray Borg. Ray Borg, who used to be in the UFC, has missed multiple weight cuts. Same exact scenarios as Nico's been in. He got cut by the UFC for I, you know, virtually the same reason. He couldn't make it to his fights. Um, he had missed weight by more than a few pounds a couple times. For people to point at Nico and say, she's invalid, she's, you, you cherry picked this situation to, sh to try to come at weight cutting in the UFCPI, bullshit. So how have people reacted? They try to pick, they try to make Nico a scapegoat saying she's a paper champ, saying what she done, what she's done in MMA doesn't matter. I mean, I guess, you know, if you're saying she's not experienced as a Valentina, and so the story doesn't matter. I mean, I guess that's your opinion. Um, she won the Ultimate Fighter. She beat Lauren Murphy. Lauren Murphy's about to face Valentina. She beat Roxy. Roxy's an MMA veteran. I mean, she won King of the Cage. She's champion of King of the Cage as well. I mean, it's uh, th this is why the phrase goes, the internet is undefeated. Because if you try to go against the trolls on the internet, you're, you're never going to win. So. And speaking of the internet, going to bring it up from last week, or it's two weeks ago, I think, Nico, I did an interview, mm -hmm. and she had commented that she was yet to see the film. Um, well, she, she, the interview with Aaron Bronstetter, that one? Yeah. 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 She basically said, um, I haven't had a chance to screen the film, which is incorrect. She's had a chance. We've actually offered to meet up with her in person and show the film before the film festival. She said she didn't have time because of her three-a-day trainings to meet up in person, which is totally understandable. And you should look at it from our point of view. We can't have the link floating around before we world premiere, especially if you're going into places like the UFCPI and all that, where it's arguable that this cast a negative light on them. So 
we offered, and I also have proof of that uh, with the DMs we sent of her. So, I mean, what uh, could she have seen the film? Yes. And then since then, uh, was there any talk of her? Did she go to the premiere? I didn't know what, if she was in Vegas that asked, time or not. Um, no, she didn't come to this premiere. Um, and I think what people have to put into context context is that she is in a very awkward situation. She, she hadn't made it to previous fights. She's trying to hold on to her job with the UFC. She's working every day with the guys at the UFC PI. So I understand why it's sensitive. If you want to say we're the bad guys, we're the scapegoat for all this, go ahead. It's fine. I understand. But like I said, this film was going to roll out whether she had a fight or not this week. We were selected for this film festival. It's in Las Vegas. That's, you know, it's it's a world premiere on our home turf. So, of course, we're going to take it. And, you know, like I said, she had other fights scheduled before this that didn't come to fruition. So if those fights would have happened, it wouldn't have been this collision of, you know, missing weight and then the film coming out about missing weight. You know, if we could plan a PR stunt that perfect, you know, we would probably be working for, you know, you know, Wall Street or whatever company, you know what I mean? Uh, it's just for people to say that it was shut up. I've read other comments. Oh, Nico missed weight on purpose to promote the documentary. Come on, guys. Seriously, why would anybody risk their life or their job or their career to do that? There's obviously some bigger issues here that she's dealing with and that many other fighters deal with. And, you know, I'll leave it at that. And as far as as I talked about people sending you comments, you had heard kind of a rumbling that the UFC was going to have people in attendance. Now I'm pretty sure they're smart and calculated and they're going to digest, but you didn't get any inklings of how they felt about the film. Uh, no, unless they sent someone that I didn't know in the audience, which I mean, I don't, I don't know if they would do that or not, but there didn't seem to be any of that type of energy at the premiere. So we'll, you know, we will keep rolling out. You know, we have Phoenix film festival next weekend. We have an Albuquerque premiere coming up there in September. Um, actually, that one will probably be of interest to the general public. The reason being is that it will be a virtual event. So people will be able to screen it if they buy a ticket from their computer or their cell phone. So I'm sure for all the people that are talking and want to make comments about it, watch the movie first and then be the judge. From everything we got from the audience reaction at our Las Vegas premiere here on Friday shows that there is a lot of empathy and uh, support for what Nico went through during the time we documented her journey. Now, what's happened before and after, again, people can call people names, point at her as a scapegoat, say it's invalid because she never makes it to fights. Again, it, people are going to say what they're going to say regardless, so there's nothing we can do about that. <clears throat> and Nico had a hard week two weeks ago, mm -hmm. and this week was coming up on you. It had already been planned. As mm -hmm. you have these other festivals rolling out in the future, has there been uh, communication with her? Are we going to see her uh, a little more involved in uh, pushing the project, so to speak? We haven't heard from her. Um, we've seen you know, the one or two posts she's put out since the missed weight cut looks like she's being positive and looking to move on. If I'm being honest, I think she could take on a Colin Kaepernick type of role with her situation because she's been documented and this has happened to many, many other fighters. So she could actually put uh, proof to her claims uh, of some of the injustices that have happened to her personally. And you've heard other fighters rumble about, um, Tim Means being another one who's in the doc documentary. I mean, people will understand that we may all have one view on weight cutting, but it's okay to be open-minded and open your perspectives and look at another viewpoint and maybe consider, could there be better regulation, safety rules? And the answer is 100% yes.
some of this footage was done a little bit ago and mm -hmm. we know that there haven't been giant strides in the industry but right. from fighters you know uh, have you heard and i know weight cutting is far behind but insurance and some of these other topics that are brought up in the film have mm -hmm. you heard if there's been any movement even of a little bit on any of those sides as far as better from fighters you know for the fighters yeah in uh, that i i haven't and I don't think much has changed, to be honest with you, except the UFC is making more money, getting bigger crypto deals and uh, dispersing it how they want to the fighters to give them breadcrumbs. It, it's for, we'll speak about weight cutting. Has anything changed on the weight cutting? No, they're still weighing in Friday morning. Uh, there doesn't seem to be any sanctioning around how much one person can cut. Like I said before, Nico wasn't the only one who even missed weight on her card. The UFC on 33 Vegas card, two other people, including a guy went to the hospital. Um, I think last last week or for this weekend's card, another fighter missed weight, made apologies online, et cetera. So as much change, no. Are the fighters who are next up for the belt in line or that are known pound for pound champions getting the fights they should be getting when they want them? No. Our fighter getting the pay that uh, is guaranteed to them, or is there other, you know, here, here's a perfect example. The other day uh, for the gone fight that just happened this weekend, he gave out, perform Dana White gave out performance bonuses, named a couple people, and then I think one of the reporters, John Morgan, said, don't you think gone should get a performance bonus? He, he performed incredible. Dana goes, you're right, he did. Let's get him one, too. Thank you, John Morgan. Credit that to John Morgan. I mean, it's like Nico says in the movie, whatever Dana White wants to do, he will do as far as that stuff goes. And that that's part of the problem. It, it's just not, you know, could you imagine the commissioner of the NBA deciding, uh, LeBron won the finals this year. Let's give him a bonus. And uh, on, on top of what I already know, they, they get paid no matter what for showing up. This is why Definitely. having a union is important. And that's why I thought it was important to mention, like we said, this fil uh, fo the film was captured over two years ago. And I still, mm -hmm. you know, you had some connections. So that's why I want to see if you had heard any rumblings of anything mover in the moving. Yeah, these the issues haven't process. gone away. These issues haven't gone away at all. It, it's exactly, I mean, you put, the rollout for the film is perfect timing. I mean, it, it just, it keeps happening over and over and over. Um, and again, it's not going to change until people get together, till people who are in MMA journalism and media talk about it until the, some, a big name fighter steps up and leads by example, similar to how Muhammad Ali led back when he didn't want to go to war as a boxer and was an outcast because he decided to lose everything he had to stand on his 10 toes and not go to Vietnam because he didn't believe in it. Someone, someone, a big name's going to have to step up and do that. People like Leslie Smith have tried to step up and she's been ostracized. You know, Nico comes out with a film about weight cutting. We come out with a film about weight cutting. She's getting ostracized and made fun of. This is how it goes. I mean, unfortunately, it's never fun to be the leader of a movement someone's got to do it and i think that's why documentaries are great they can help provoke change again landon thank you for the time <laughs> thank you guys appreciate it <laughs>